Hi folks, welcome to 2022 on the Cash Guy Guy. It's time I cracked on with these. I'm really sorry for the lack of content over the past few few months, like what, October, September time was last time I didn't. But anyway, let's crack on. So as usual, as usual as it was, it's still usual now. I want to start off the video by saying a huge thank you to my members. Now more than ever, because you guys have stuck with me, even though there's not been any content, I really hugely appreciate it. I don't know why you're still here, but thank you so much. Uh, those guys are Shane Cook, you've been here for ages, you're the first member I had and you're still going, I really appreciate it mate. Uh, Matthew Reynolds, Tess Boaz, and also got a couple of new ones, uh, we've got Mandy Birak, I hope I pronounced that correctly mate, um, and also Tim Broughton, so you guys are all awesome. If you do want to join those guys and get access to videos 24 hours before anyone else, as well as um, you get to see behind the scenes posts as such, or, or what's to come, um, so this video, um, my members knew about it on Sunday and we're now on this should be Wednesday the day that it's been uploaded um, so yeah you get to get a few extra little bits like that um, and also emojis and stuff but yeah have a look at the join button just below and uh, you'll see what's available but yeah this video is going to be one that's been it's been quite requested in the past um, and it's just a case of I've not needed to do it until now and that is the breaks um, so obviously this video is going to be a guide I am not a qualified mechanic, so I am doing it as what I've been taught in the past by friends and mechanics themselves. Um, so, you know, don't at all even attempt this if you're not comfortable, because obviously brakes are a huge car system. If, if they go wrong, it goes without saying what can happen. So only do this if you are comfortable in what you're doing. Um, otherwise, yeah, I'd, I'd leave it to the professionals or so yeah, what I've done is I've um, been out and I've bought my car parts, the, the brake pads and discs from Euro Car Parts, which are a really well-known UK brand. This isn't sponsored. If you are watching Euro Car Parts and you'd like to sponsor me, get in touch. Um, but the thing about Euro Car Parts, if you don't know already, is that they have always, it seems, got some kind of promotional offer on So um, I managed to get something like 60% off the recommended retail price of these brakes. Um, so the total should have been somewhere around £250 and I ended up paying £138. So yeah, it's, it's worth checking out your car parts. I'll put a link in the description even though they're not sponsoring. Um, and when you go on the website, somewhere at the top, it'll probably say, you know, 50% off parts, enter this code. And just make sure that you enter that code at the end. Uh, if you use that like Honey, something like that, they um, often have those promo codes built into Honey already and it will try and attach them. But yeah, that's that's separate so for now let's have a look what you actually get when you do buy brick pads and discs from a uh, car parts store um, nothing exciting but I'll show you what you get in the box and then what I'll do we'll get down to the car I'll explain exactly what you need to do to get you know the pads off the discs off um, and the stuff involved in doing that um, do the whole change as a guide and then the other side I'll sort of do a fast forwarded video because it's literally a mirror on the other side there's there's no real difference the only difference that you may find is that the bolts are a bit more seized on or something like that um, it is something to point out that the older your car the higher the mileage the more well used it's been you like to have issues with you know bolts that are not seized but are really hard to undo um, so make sure if you are going to do this you've got the relevant tools you've got a decent spanner set socket set uh, you know things like a, a mallet as well can be useful um, and stuff like that but I'll go through all that as we do the job uh, for now let's get these boxes open and see exactly what you get in the box so the parts then so here's my invoice just to show you exactly what I've paid um, the prices may change and uh, promos will come and go so uh, showing you this side my address is on the other side that's why it's folded over but you can see here don't worry too much about taking notes of the part numbers and stuff because websites like euro car parts you just put your registration number in uh, and it'll bring them in uh, the exact parts you need so uh, you can see here the pads so the pads do come as a set of four so you just need the one box of pads uh, that was a total of 40 pounds 14 and the discs are priced each so there's two of those at 48.94 so a total of 138 pounds and two pence for these. So uh, let's have a look at the pads first, which is an easier box to get in. So this is what you get when you box the pads. Like I said, you will just get um, 
one box will have four in. Um, you'll see on the side here, you'll always see it should have an applicable four list and you can see here we've got applicable four. Nissan Qashqai 13 onwards and the Qashqai four wheel drive 13 onwards. So they obviously use the same pads there. Um, and it does say one set slash four pieces. So what you should expect in your box is, so we've got the four uh, rear covers, I don't know if I'll fit them or not. We've got four pads, all stamped with Brembo. And you can see this is the thickness that new pads have. Um, it's around about an inch, I believe. Um, I'll double check for you. Um, I'll take them just away. Here we go. So the exact thickness of these brand new pads is yeah, just over an inch. If you can just see that, just over an inch. Perhaps by one inch, but yeah, that's what uh, you're looking at now. As for when you should be looking at changing your pads, uh, when you get to around about sort of five mil, six mil, that's when you need to be monitoring it. And when you get down to three, two, you know, I think mine are on three at the moment. That's when you you really need to change them because you know you're getting towards the end. The last thing you want is to get right down to this metal because that will not do much uh, stopping at all. So yeah, that's that's what you get in the box. Uh, there's also a couple of the runner pegs as well uh, to replace. Always worth replacing those because they can get uh, worn out. And then it's just the last instructions. That's probably just. The, T's and C's in the box. So yeah, that's where you get in the pads, the pad box, and back for now. Um, when I do take the old pads off, I will show you them side by side with some new ones, just to show you what the wear's like. And the other box is a big heavy boy, obviously. Whoa. Gosh, because even though you buy them as two units, it still comes in one box. So in here, to turn the camera a little bit, there we go. We've got all my son's toy cars in the background. There we go, so we've got these big boys. Now the best thing about these is they come with new locator screws. So these basically are quite fat headed screws. Now what these do is they hold the disc onto the axle or onto the hub um, for you so that it's not going to be moving around whilst you're tightening up. It's really useful. Um, you'll see, take on these out, these are very heavy because obviously they're solid steel. Ugh. You can see we've got the, uh, let's get this right, so you've got the one, two, three, four, five wheel nut holes, but then we've also got these here. Now these are where these locator screws go. Um, there's two, I'm wondering if there's gonna be two when we get down to the car, but obviously you only need one in there just to hold it in place. Um, so that's that. So that's great to get them. Sometimes, perhaps if you go for a cheaper option, you might not get these included. So yes, I won't get the other one out because these do weigh a lot, but these are your vented brake discs and the other one is just under here under that protective paper there oh gosh these are so heavy right. try not to throw them at each other uh, as for what's on the box i didn't really show you the sticker but again it sort of confirms the uh the well-known thing that nissan Qashqai and the renault kajar are the same thing oh, if we have a look on the applicable side here look you can see Got it noted that the front discs, but also look, we've got Nissan Leaf, and that is 11 onwards, Nissan Qashqai J11, 11, 13 onwards, uh, Nissan X Trail, 13 onwards, and then the Renault Kajar, 15 onwards. So, yeah, it's sort of a, a known thing that the Kajar and the Qashqai are pretty much the same car. Um, just a few other things, so we've got it ticked that it does come with the locator screws, um, and they're not sure what that's trying to tell us there, someone might be able to tell me. Uh, might mean that they're pre-cleaned, I don't know, might need some brake cleaner on there. But yeah, that's the boxes. Oh, they weigh a lot. Uh, that's about it. So what we're going to do now is get down to the car and uh, start getting the car jacked up. Get the, old, get the wheel off, get the old pads out, old discs off. But don't worry, I'm going to explain every step of the way for you. So let's head out to the car. Okay, so we've got the wheel off, just put to the side. I've also put an axle stand underneath just to be extra safe alongside the jack. Now, obviously here we've got our brakes. So we've got the brake disc and the pads tucked away inside the caliper just here. First job we need to do is we need to remove the two nuts at the back, which are these. Got one up here and one at the bottom just here. They may need a bit of WD-40 or something like that to remove those two because they can get quite seized on. 
So uh, let's get those undone, undone now. Okay, with these uh, two 14 millimeter uh, nuts removed off the back of the caliper like I just showed you, it actually releases the caliper now. Now, there's probably a set way of removing it, but what I like to do is just simply get a flat screwdriver in and just slowly prise it out. And it should come out. Just take your time with it, it's not a rush. When it gets loose enough, just give it a wobble and that releases it. Now, this is obviously attached to your brake line up here, just out of shot, sorry, but you can just see it going up. And try not to put too much tension on that. Put it somewhere that it'll hold its own weight, like on top of the axle, just like that, on top of the strut, sorry. Um, so next up, that gives us our access to our pads, which we can now remove again. Simple flat screwdriver, they're held in with a metal clip, actually, these ones are. So, they're gonna pop out, like so. One, and then the one at the back as well. Again, because I'm changing the discs, I'm not too bothered about damaging the existing discs, so I'll put a bit of pressure on them. And that is the old pads out. So what I'll do now is I'll show you the comparison of the old pads to what we're replacing them with. So that's the old pad removed. Now you can see here, this is one of them. Um, I haven't got a measure with me, I'm guessing that's probably about three to four mil. And what we're replacing it with, you can see the difference. Try put them exactly side by side. Uh, it's, it's way over double, you can just see the difference, new ones old. So yeah, that's the pads removed. Now, because we're doing the discs as well, we need to do a little bit more work. If you're just doing the pads at this point, you can just do a re reversal of removal, which I'll go, through, I'll go through once we've got the new discs on. But because we're removing the discs and changing them as well, we've got to do a little bit more work first. So now we're left with obviously the discs here, um, but we need to get this uh, caliper runner, pad runner, I don't know the official name if I'm honest. We need to get this off here. Now for that, we need to remove a couple more hefty bolts, which are at the back here, excuse the camera work. We've got one down here, and one just above it, just under where I'm resting the current caliper. Get the camera around, yeah, this guy here, so there's two I need removing next. Okay, so uh, with that removed, that was quite long bolts actually, it's these guys here. Uh, they are, I used a uh, three quarter inch ratchet. Initially I used my big uh, torque wrench or I used a breaker bar. And then once it was pretty loose, I used a smaller handheld one because obviously the problem is you've got not a lot of space under here to uh, get much uh, torque on it. But yes, once that's removed, this guy here simply just, uh, simply just pulls off, put him out of the way, give him a wire brush shortly so now we're just left with the disc now like i showed you inside we've got this locating screw here now that is a torx screw um, i'll get that one done and i'll tell you exactly which size torx bit you're going to need first issue which is a very common one and that is that this uh, locator screw which uh, for reference is a Torx T30 you can see it's rounded off and that's really common so what we're going to do is just drill it out quite simply it's just a quite a fat headed screw that's holding it in place um, and once we remove that head it uh, should pop off not too much of an issue but it's quite a common one so time to crack out the drill so I didn't show you the drill bit, but uh, just simply drill into it and it'll, uh, if you've got a decent head on it, it'll take the screw out like so. And once that's out, the disc is free. Now I'm going to see if I can, well actually I'm not going to need to, it looks like. So, bring you over. 
So obviously there's the one we've drilled out. Let's get the uh, rest of that head out. We've also got another, what looks to be another locator there maybe, I'm not sure. I'm gonna see if I can draw this screw out because uh, it'd be ideal to use the same hole. So we'll get that out and then we'll crack on and get the new discs on. Okay, so a little side by side comparison. There's our old disc, you can tell it's quite worn in the middle and there's our new disc. That's replacing it. So you can see, I mean, there's not a huge lip on the old disc, if I'm honest, but they are quite corroded inside. I mean, you know, these are actually elements that get hot, they cool down, they get hot, they cool down. They, they're going to get rusty, but yeah, just while I'm doing the pads, I thought I might as well change these. What you're basically doing is, is rubbing your finger to the edge and seeing what sort of lip there is. Ideally, no lip, but I can feel a bit of a lip there. Nothing too much, but like I said, it's always worth doing a bit of disc whilst doing the pads, just saves you having to do two jobs. So next up, let's get this disc on and see what that locator screw is like. So putting the new disc on is pretty simple, it's just a case of getting it on there and lining up the holes. So our locator holes, which are there and there, you can tell because they're sort of recessed. Just bringing that round to that old locator hole, that's just there. Obviously making sure all the other holes line up, which they should, for your wheel ropes, hole 5. And the locator screw. I'm surprised if this goes in, but it's worth a go. Okay, I'm not going to go any more than that, I don't want to round the head off. But what that's going to do for us at least is hold the disc in place for us for a bit. Um, and probably remove that once we've got the caliper back on. It's not a huge problem, it just stops the disc moving around whilst we're fitting everything back on. Obviously once the calipers are on there, the disc is going to go nowhere. So once the wheel's on there, the disc is going to go nowhere anyway because your wheel bolts are going to hold it onto the hub. So yeah, next up, it's time to get uh, whatever I've put it. Time to get this guy back on with those big bolts at the back. Uh, it's all basically now just the reverse of removal. So uh, let's crack on with that. <laughs> So that's back on. He saw I talked it up quite uh, heftily with the big torque wrench just to make sure it was as it was before we removed it. So next up is the pads. Now it's best practice to put a bit of copper grease on the two ends here which are going to sit in the runners and it will just help them move back and forward as you brake. Uh, copper grease is relatively cheap um, you can get it from most motor factors. Uh, I've got a Loctite one here I've had for quite a long time. I'm just going to put it around the edge and sometimes it's best just to put a big blob on it and then smooth it out with your fingers. You don't want any of this obviously on the face, you don't want nothing on the face of the pad because that can affect your brake performance initially when you're bedding them in. So that there, like I say, that's all. I'm just going to make sure it's under the running area, not on the pad itself. Same on the other side. And then they simply push in to the runner so I'm just going to move the camera so you get a better view of this. So you can see here the two runners at the top and the bottom. What we're going to do is push it into the bottom one and into the top one just push it into place. The rear one obviously I can't really get a decent angle to show you exactly how that's done but it is effectively exactly the same. Putting copper grease on those two ends which I'm doing now off camera and then they just into the back part of the runner. So exactly the same. Have a look around the back of you doing it. That little runner in one, in two, and voila. So once you've done that, you'll be able to see 
that the pads are sat either side. Pad one, pad two, they're sat there. And also now we're holding the, the disc in place pretty well. So next thing we need to do is we need to rewind the piston in the caliper, which is in here. There's multiple ways of doing that. Um, mine's probably not going to be the most agreed upon method, but it's the way it works for me. Um, but we'll crack on with that next. Okay, so the method that works for me is to get under the end, under the bonnet, find your uh, brake fluid cap, remove it, put the cap somewhere you're not going to lose it, and then just put some sort of absorbing cloth or paper towel around it just to catch any fluid because basically what we're going to do now is push the piston back, which will push um, pressure back into the brake system, which will potentially make this fluid level rise and it may overflow, may not. So that should do for now. So let's get down to the piston next. <clears throat> so what we need to do is here, this big circle here, that's what pushes on your pads to make you break. We need to push this back. Now what I use, like I say, is not a very brilliant method in some people's eyes. And I use one of these. So I'll open it right up. Get it on hold of the piston and literally push it back by squeezing this trigger together. Um, if I can find one of these on Amazon, I'll put a link in the description because they're quite useful to do. So we'll do that next. So you can now see that that piston is pushed right back. It's now flush, now side on, flush with the camper. And if you have a look at the brake fluid reservoir, uh, it has raised, but it's not even gone that much high at all. I think beforehand it was at the bottom of that blue, now it's sort of level with the top of the blue. So yeah, that's just the precautionary method. Um, but once that's back now, we're sort of on the home stretch, to be honest. So the next thing we're going to do is put this caliper, excuse the dodgy camera work here. I'm going to put this caliper back onto the runner. Once the, because I've pushed that back enough, I know it's going to set over it. If you don't push that back enough, it'll probably not cover your new pads. You've got to remember that your new pads are thicker, which is the reason we've got to push that piston back. Because your new pads are thicker, we need to give it more room in order to push it. But putting it back on is dead simple. It's just a case of putting it back into place. Over the new pads. Lining up them holes, excuse my head, getting the screws in the back. And finger tightening them in, excuse my head again. One and two. Now, some places, sometimes you may get replacement um, of these bolts. Uh, it's probably worth doing if you can get them. I uh, haven't got any, so I'm not doing it. Again, this is the way I do it, it might not be the correct way. Um, but it's the way I do it. So I'm just finger tightening these now, and then I'm just going to tighten it back up with this spanner, which is over here. So yeah, these are 14 millimeter nuts. So what I'm going to do is sort of do it as tight as I can. And then I'm going to get the uh, torque wrench on it as well, just to make sure, or at least a. Uh, a wrench of some sort just so that they are as tight as I can do them. The one thing I didn't mention is these guys here, the covers, if you want to fit them you can and that will just cover up the logo but you know come to selling time for this car people who have a look at the car will be able to look through the spokes of the wheels look at the brakes and see Brembo so they know that these are well looked after brakes um, you know they're not a dodgy brand entirely up to you. If you want to put those covers on, they just clip over the top of them. Otherwise, you can see them there. Like I say, something I'm going to keep. So next, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove this because it doesn't sit perfectly true and I don't want to cause any issues with putting the wheel back on. So I'm going to remove that and then we should get the wheel back on when we're done. So with that locating pin moved, don't be too alarmed. Obviously, your disc is going to be loose now. Excuse me. Um, so it's once you've got your wheel on, 
that the, the knots are going to hold it tight. The only thing is it may move around. So what I'd suggest doing at this point is actually with the engine off, getting in the car and just putting a few pumps onto the brake, which I'll do now and you may see as it moves like that, you'll see it should go true because I'll pump the brake. So there we go, you should have seen it move then. Um, so because the car's off, there's no brake fluid being pumped around, so it actually it's sort of like the brakes are seized on now until I start the car. But you can see now that that disc still even moves a little bit, but it is much better pressed in place. I might give it another pump actually because I've just moved it a little. So there we go, that's that done. Now it's just a case of just getting the wheel back on. That's it then, so that's this front off side wheel done. Um, hopefully you managed to follow all this, these steps that I've used. Um, unfortunately one of the spokes is sat right over it, but what I'm saying about being able to still see that they're Brembo brakes, you can just see through here into the caliper. Uh, hopefully you can just see that. Um, so yeah, that's one done. What I'm gonna do, like I said, the other side, I'm just gonna video me in sort of fast forward, getting the job done. Uh, Cause you don't need to see it all again, really. Okay, so the other one's done. Um, I didn't actually record it in the end, I didn't bother, it was too much effort to remove some bolts. Um, to note, these bolts here are the hardest to remove, you need some real strength, you definitely need a breaker bar or a decent torque wrench to remove them. I uh, also forgot to mention that these metal clips, you need to ensure that the prong, you can see at the end, is obviously on the outside of the pad, not on the inside, um, just because that's going to push it into place properly, so make sure you do that. Um, otherwise yeah, you might have a few issues there but uh, no that's the job done wheel back on uh, give it a road test make sure we're all good as for the brake fluid it is right at the top now as you can see I've come right to the ridge so uh, I'll drain a little bit of that out to get it back down to the max level which is just here pretty much the top of the tub uh, we'll just drain a little bit out of that um, and that's it that's the job done so yeah that's the job done guys like I said do not attempt that unless you are confident to do it um, overall this has probably taken me about an hour and a half maybe that's with recording um, like I said the issues were I had to drill out that um, locator sorry, drill out that locator screw and also those uh, knots holding the the runner on were really on so yeah you need a lot of effort to get them off but you know the thing is I've probably saved myself a good 300 to 300 pound there if I did it myself but like I said I've got the confidence to do it don't attempt it if you haven't so that's it like I said give the car a quick test drive drain out some excess of that fluid with just a towel uh, kitchen roll or something like that if you like um, and yeah should be all good thanks so much guys for watching um, if you're not subscribed already and you've got a cash kite I don't know why you're not subscribed because there's so many videos on here that will help you um, and also please do drop a like because that helps the YouTube algorithm and uh, like-minded people will find this video so yeah, thanks very much, happy new year to you all, and I'll see you in the next video.